Hello, I'm Caleb Keenan, a senior at Darnell High School. Growing up, I was raised to respect the people who serve, teach, and protect us. So when I was picking the East Project, an idea popped in my head about people I admire, professions I classify as being heroes. These professions have been under scrutiny for actions of a few, so I wanted to make a video celebrating our true heroes in our community. Sharing such a video will give me a perfect platform to show why not all heroes wear capes. Chapter 2 is an interview with Mrs. Myra Everett, a special education teacher at Darnell High School. Why do you do what you do? That's an interesting question. I do, let me tell you a story about my life as a teacher, wanting to be a teacher. When I first started college, I was like most of you. I thought, yeah, I don't want to be a teacher. Everybody in my family, they were teachers. They didn't make very much money. And I tell you, I just knew, oh no, I didn't want to be a teacher. Not at all. But where am I? I'm right here. And, um, and I kind of made a, a life circle to get here. But I'm here. And I remember telling my mom even that, oh no, I never want to be a teacher because they have to put in a lot of time. And at that time, when you're out, when you get out of school, your first year, you're like, money, money, money. You just want to make some money. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're planning on getting into teaching for money, don't do it, because it's not about money. It's about making a difference in all of our students. But uh, as a young person, I had all of these ideas that I wanted to be this and that. And I know you guys went through that last year with the four-year plans. Well, guess what? Even as an adult, sometimes we, we don't know what we want to be. But experiences in life will take us there that will help you determine what you really, what you're good at, mm -hmm. what you can be happy, what area you can be happy in, make a living for your family. But as far as, as getting to this point, I can honestly tell you, my main reason for getting into teaching was that that's where I'm supposed to be. And to make a difference. I believe that God sent me into this profession to make a difference. Because like I said, I made a circle trying to fight it all the way. Because I knew that it would be different. So, what to you is the most important part of your job? My students. Now, I call them my babies, and they're going to kill me for saying it's my babies, Miss Everett, but they really are. I feel responsible for them from the time they step foot on campus until the time they leave, and from the time they start here in high school until they graduate. So to me, if I can make a difference in their life and help them to learn to be more independent, mm -hmm. that's my goal. That's, that's what I want to work for. So, what are the types of skills that you try to teach your students? They need skills, like all students, to help you support yourself. As a parent, you know, I knew that I wanted my kids to be able to take care of themselves. I'm not going to be around forever, okay? So, my whole goal is to make sure that they can be independent, have a job, support themselves. That's the main thing. And those skills include being able, not just math, because my focus is on math, but it's not just all about math. It's all about making that student a well-rounded person that can get a job, uh, take care of a family, you know, people that can, can be good citizens, that's very important, be good citizens, good citizens and work to make their life better and be happy in what you do because that's important too. So how much do your students grow going through your class? Well, I think from the ninth grade to the twelfth grade, every day. You know, a lot of times they don't want to take their school pictures. Mm -hmm. But I can see the difference not only 
in the way that they grow physically, but the way that they grow mentally as well. Some of my ninth graders, I can remember, and I always call them, and I know you guys have names for freshmen and sophomores or whatever, but my freshmen, when they become 10th graders, they get just a little bit more, they know more about the high school, mm -hmm. where to go, but as ninth graders, they're scared to death. They really are. They don't know a lot of the upperclassmen. They don't know what to expect from teachers or upperclassmen. So what happens is that each semester, each year they grow a little bit. Mm -hmm. They become more comfortable. Uh, they feel like they can go to the pavilion and talk to people because that's a, that's a big place. That's a kind of rite of pass, you know, for mm -hmm. you to go out there and be able to, to go out there and talk to people and get to know other students, that's a big one for a ninth grader. Well, in the 10th grade, again, they have to go through this little ritual. They've made friends now. They know where their hangout is, okay? Uh, they know where they shouldn't go. So, and then by the time they're 11th graders, they change. Sometimes I tell them that I don't know if I like that change because they become, what, too comfortable. And you can see that little, uh, what do I want to call it? You see that part that comes out, uh, they begin to grow more mm -hmm. in ways that I don't want them to grow. They discover things about, about school, about other people, mm -hmm. and they just want to, you know, really have fun. I mean, that's normal. But you just don't want to get into uh, areas and get into, I want to say, groups of people that could cause problems. Mm -hmm. And you know we all go through that. Uh, a growth period where you, you want to hang out with upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. It's not a good thing sometimes. And sometimes upperclassmen can, can help our lower classmen. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, hopefully they can be leaders too. If our upperclassmen, and they look up to you guys, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how our ninth graders, you know, when, when they can, when you speak to them, it means a lot. When you are a senior or a junior and you speak to a ninth grader or you recognize them and say, mm -hmm. hey man, how you doing? That means a lot to them. So it, it's really leadership. It's a leadership issue, I think, in what kind of role models they pick up. So what skills are necessary to be a teacher? Number one, you gotta have patience. Now in my field, a lot of patience. And I guarantee you every teacher is going to tell you that. Mm -hmm. Patience is number one. But you also, you got to have a vision for the students. Mm -hmm. Every teacher, we all have something that we want for our students. And that's mostly to be good leaders. You know, to be good law-abiding citizens. And, but to be a teacher, you got to give a lot of time. Mm -hmm you better know that this is what you want to do, okay? Before you get into teaching, know that you're gonna spend a lot of time here. You're gonna spend a lot of time uh, with paperwork, but most of your time will be spent in working with the students. Sometimes there are personal issues. It goes above and beyond just paperwork. Mm -hmm. Sometimes <clears throat> we have to talk with students and counsel them. A teacher, we just, you're just going to wear a lot of hats, mm -hmm. and that's part of it. So, as a teacher, if you're going to experience a lot of things, and hopefully you're up to giving that time, because if you're not, it's going to be very stressful for you. So, how do you define a hero? Someone that's willing to give the time. And, and have the courage to maybe sometimes uh, go above and beyond a teacher's job. You know, all of our things that we're responsible for, we have to go above and beyond what the state requires. Mm -hmm. Go above and beyond what the book requires. So, to be a hero, you got to be able to put that time in and want to do it because that makes a difference. 
you got to be able to say, you know, well, okay, I might not be able to to go somewhere uh, this afternoon because I know I need to stay here, okay? Either I need to meet with the student, meet with the parent, or I just need to do my paperwork. So there's a lot involved. To be a hero, you got to be willing to give that time to make a change. So what you're saying is teachers are heroes? Yes, because there's no profession in which it did not start with a teacher. Every profession, I guarantee you, began with the teacher. Somewhere, somehow, it started with the teacher. Teaching you the right skills, teaching you, and it's not just skills. There are behavioral aspects of it too. And you guys, you look at us and you, you have role models. You're always paying attention to what we do. Mm -hmm. So hopefully as teachers, we can set that example for you. When you think about it, how many professions do you have out here that didn't start with a teacher? Think about it. Can you think of any profession that didn't start with a teacher? Every one, every profession that you can think of, it started with a teacher. Some teacher decided to make a difference in the life of students. Not because there was any money in it, but because we want to. So, to me, to, to, to be that hero, you, you're going to have to step up and realize that it's going to be, you're going to have to give up some things, but it's all for, it's all worth it. It's all worth it. It really is. When, when you see the kids step across that stage at ATU, when you graduate, it's the best feeling that you made a difference in that student's life.